<laughs> What's up, y'all? It's the kid Fort Worth Fabian, man. Big Boss Fabo, I'm back with a reaction video, man. And this one's special, y'all. I'm sure you already know by the title, but we got the Holler Boy, The Rise of Ryan Upchurch full length documentary, man. I'm excited, y'all. I literally just got sent this um, in association with two Upchurch reactions I did. I did Red Coat and YZ. Um, and then I got recommended to look into the Holler Boy documentary, obviously his uh, his uh, his come up. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been doing a lot. I've been watching a lot of interviews of his, a lot of behind the scenes of his um, and just get familiarized with who, who homie is. And he's a stand up guy, man, really like um, really inspired me just in the sense of how he's talked about how he was just relentless with pursuing his dreams, man. But uh, let me give a quick shout out, man. A quick shout out to, let me do a quick check. Uh, you know my memory, y'all. I'll be, I'll be, you know. Shout out to Bobby Beatty, man. Bobby Beatty recommended to watch the Holler Boy documentary, man. And I'm excited for this one. I don't know if people have actually done a reaction to this, but I don't care because you know on my channel, like when I get into an artist, I go to the depths of all various forms of performances, content, you know what I mean? Documentaries, especially to just get more familiarized with that artist. Because you guys know when, when you get to know an artist, like that makes you just enjoy and love their music that much more. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Fort Worth Fabian, man. We are on the road to a million subscribers. Yeah, believe it or not, man. A million subscribers. I'm putting that in the out atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to keep working. Um, definitely check out my Ryan Upchurch playlist. I got a link to that down below. And you can basically check out all the reactions I've done to Ryan up church up to this point, man. This I'm excited for, man. I'm just, I, I, I don't even got my headphones. What the? All right, here we go. Here we go, y'all. Let me get set up real quick. And uh, it's an hour and 20 minute long documentary. So I typically cut up documentaries into parts. I do 20 minute parts. So, hey, man, let's hop into this, bro. The Holler Boy. PG-13, get your kids. What Ryan has is not something you can be taught. It's not something you can learn. Facts. You either have it or you don't. He was born with it's it. It's just him. Know? At the end of the day, like he, that's that's why everyone's so attracted to him. It's because the same dude that you're gonna see on the camera is the same dude you're gonna see in the grocery store. When people look back on this whole genre of music, he will be what is remembered. He will he will be the Elvis Presley for this genre. There's no doubt in my mind. Dang. Because he really is that guy. He's not some painted picture. That's why he's church, and that's why he's done it 100% the underground way. I remember this one uh, older lady there turned around. And Bro, I'm getting pumped. I'm getting fueled. But I'll tell you this, man, the underground way, the best way, the independent route, you know, from the ground up, from the mud, you know, self-made, That that's just the most, like... It, 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 it's just most like the most heartfelt or heartwarming. I didn't even made it like that yet. And I already know that that pattern or that form of, you know, going about pursuing your dreams or your goals is like the most rewarding way to get it when you did it from the ground up. And, um, you know, he's very humble, bro. Like he's very about um, being who you are. And as they're, you know, obviously detailing, he's always kept it that way. To me, she said, that's your baby up there. And she goes, they love him like they loved Elvis Presley. That's crazy. Shout he's out real. Elvis, man. He's authentic. He's R. the real dude. He's not faking it. Yes. Church. He's going to do something that hasn't been done before. Facts. He, he already has, kind of, right? But his fans, I mean... They hang on it every word he says. He he definitely is. He there he's their he's their voice. And because he really has a voice and he really does use it through Instagram and through all the mediums that he has. I like the scenery they got, man. <laughs> Real theatrical. You know what I'm saying? Real big screen.
Ryan Up Church. Wow. I just want to be the most clean cut, professional country boy from Tennessee who ever existed. I want to be the most diverse artist that ever existed. I want to be, I want to be the dude who fucking killed country, killed rock, killed rap. I want to be that dude where they were like, how the fuck did he go from being a broke ass painter with no high school education to being this motherfucking this crazy guy. ass weird musician guy who can fucking make anything and speaks to people's soul. And that's why he inspired me. You know, I'm not gonna do too much pausing throughout this. I'm gonna watch the majority of it, but I gotta commentate. He comment he inspired me just in the aspect that he's like, bro, I just said I'm gonna do this. You know what I'm saying? Cause I was watching this no jumper interview with Adam 22 and he was just speaking to the extent of like at the beginning, it was rough. I wasn't that good at what I was doing, but you know, practice make perfect, man. As cliche as that sound, repetition is the father of learning. You keep pressing at something, it's gonna become like a craft, it's gonna become a skill, it's gonna be something that you've sharpened your sword at. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I want for me. Like, that's what I want for my dreams and my journey. You know, I want people to be like, how, how did he go from just doing this YouTube to like where he at right now? How, you know, and I can't even, that's all God, you know what I'm saying? Like. Like they were saying in the beginning, what well, was for up church is for up church. You can't re strategize somebody's destiny and who they was born to be. You know what I mean? Only that only he can do what he's doing now. You can't mimic it. There's only one of one. Makes you believe in yourself through a song. That's what I want to be known for. I don't give a fuck about my cars. I don't give a fuck about real estate. I don't give a fuck if you think I'm fat, ugly, got too many fucking tattoos. Teeth are fucked up. I don't give a fuck what you think about me. Because there's one thing yeah. you cannot deny. That I'm a hard fucking worker and I'm good at what I do. And I want to be greater and I want to work harder in the future. I don't ever... Hard work beats talent when talent don't work hard. I want to backtrack. I'm not the backtracking kind of guy. And even after I'm dead, I still don't want to backtrack. I want motherfuckers to be like, who in the fuck was this dude? And why in the fuck got up with this guy when he was alive? That's what I want to be. And that's what I will be, because I said so. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. I guess you can't make this up, bro. He is literally what he, like, I like him because he's so certain. You know, he put it in the atmosphere, put it in the universe, speak it into existence. He said, I'm gonna be that, because I said so. <laughs> yes. I'm going to be whatever I'm going to be because I said I was going to be it. You know? I'm going to be that because I'm going to work at it. And I'm not going to stop till I'm dead. Like, I'm going to get to where I need to get. You know what I'm saying? God willing. I knew. I just knew. I knew from that moment. Um, I, I knew that Ryan was going to be a star. Mmm. Wow. I was born May the 24th, 1991, in Nashville, Tennessee, at Baptist Hospital. Hey, Hospital. 90s babies. At that time, we lived babies. on Pond Creek Road, and we lived in this little tiny trailer uh, that we rented from a guy named Paddlefoot. God, I think that thing was like 30 years old. It had horrible carpet. It was just, it was not good. But it was fun living on Pond Creek Road back then. Mama Dukes. Things were a lot different than they are now. You knew your neighbors. You knew, uh, heck, half your family lived on, you know, the same street. You didn't have to worry so much when your kid played out in the yard and things like that, like you do now. It's, it's a very different place right now, but it was a much more friendly place back then. He started talking really, really young. I remember taking him to the grocery store and little old people absolutely loved Ryan. Uh, they would come up and talk to him and they were always impressed because he had great vocabulary. At 15 months old, he could carry on a full conversation with a person. He had bright wow. copper red hair, it looked like a peony. When he went out in the sun, it had like three different colors of red in it, like strawberry blonde, red, and this auburn red. So he, it just looked like his hair, it looked like a penny out in the sunlight, it was so pretty. He was beautiful. 
He was so cute. Aww. Um, oh gosh, let me tell you this though. When uh, when he was born, when we first brought him home, dude, he was so strong. <laughs> we brought him home when he was a baby. We could lay him on his, like, babies don't really lift themselves up, or, you know, push up off the floor, you know, when you lay them on their belly when they're first, like, born. But he was doing that at two two weeks old. He could push himself up and his little head would just bobble back and forth. It was so, so cute. He had such strong upper body strength. And I remember at the uh. hospital when he was born, he held on to the sides of the little thing that they put your baby in, the little crib, whatever, with the metal rails on it. He held on to the side of it and... and they could barely peel his hands off of the side of it. He was holding it so tight. He liked to be the center of attention. Because he was the first grandchild, it's like he did everything with my dad, did everything with his dad. He was just, a, he was the baby. You know, he was the first baby. So he was always the center of attention. He was a great brother. Um, Bro, he, bro he got two older brothers too? What's it about the third child? I'm the third child. I got two older brothers. I mean, they're saying he was the baby. Does he have older siblings, obviously? You know what I mean? But there's something about the third kid, not to toot my own horn, but it's like once you see what your older brothers go through, what your siblings go through, it's like you're learning from their experience. You know what I'm saying? Brother, when he was four, almost five, when we brought Aaron home, absolutely loved him, held him, took care okay. of him, looked after him. He got he was a always little brother. Really, really sweet, really good with all kids. He was really good with children, other kids his own age. He was always sweet and, you know, giving and things like that. He wasn't confrontational at all. He was, he just loved everybody. When he was 16 mm. years old, he would help my dad with his paint company. He would work with his dad sometimes. He did odd jobs here and there at a pretty young age. But uh, he started writing lyrics down about that age and until he collected, he used to carry on this um, toolbox, just one of the metal toolboxes that you put all your paint rushes and stuff like that in. He would carry that around and while he was out, if, if something came to him, he would write it down on whatever he had, whether it be a little piece of wood or if he could find a piece of paper, he'd write it on the back of an invoice or something. But the thing was packed full with lyrics to so many songs that are just lost now. We don't know what happened to it. Well, he might know what happened to it. I don't know what happened to it. But uh, I knew how serious he was when he started carrying that around with him and everywhere he went. He actually came to me one day and said, told me, Mama, I want to be a country singer. And I said, do it, baby. Do it. And uh, I always would tell them, if you really want to do something bad enough, it you can make it happen. And it was so real to him before it ever happened. He would have dreams and visions of himself on stage. And every bit of that came true. Every bit of it. Wow. Getting the chills, y'all. Woo! All right, what's your name and where are you from? My name is Ryan Upchurch, and I'm from Cheatham County, Tennessee. And how old are you? I'm 25 years old. How did you become a YouTube personality? I became a YouTube personality pretty much by accident. Um, you know, I didn't even have a, I didn't have an Instagram, I didn't have a Facebook, uh, Snapchat, Twitter, none of that stuff. And I had made, I just had a Facebook, a personal yeah, Facebook. Twitter. <laughs> and me and my buddies went out to a strip club one night, and some shit went down. And uh, we ended up getting kicked out, and I made a video bitching about the situation. And somebody had taken it off my Facebook and ended up posting it on, uh, I think it was YouTube at the time. I didn't even have YouTube then either. I didn't know how to make a YouTube account. And one day we were uh, eating lunch at work after uh, for lunch or whatever. At lunch, we was eating. <laughs> and at work, uh, we went on lunch break and the chick at the restaurant was like, hey, you're that redneck guy off the internet. And I was like, what? What's she talking about? And she showed me the video that I had made um, bitching about the strip club we were at. And it, it was called, the video was called Athlete's Lip. Yeah, I've been to a strip joint before. <laughs> Never again. I'd rather get butt naked and cuddle with a dirty hobo. This girl was like, hey baby, can I give you a lap dance? <laughs> <laughs> no. What the fuck's on your face? Uh, got Athlete's <laughs> Lip. So, I made a video about it and it apparently went viral. It didn't go viral, but it got a shit ton of views. Enough to, enough to know, enough for people to be like, hey, where's that redneck guy? I want to see another video. 
And that's where Upchurch Redneck was made. Everybody was like, where's the Redneck? Where's the Redneck? Where's that Redneck guy? And my last name's Upchurch, so I just created Upchurch the Redneck. And that's where it started. Hey, I'm here to tell you that I'm more country -er than you, boy. <laughs> hashtag country, hashtag music, hashtag sticks, hashtag backwards. What's up, you damn pansies? My name's Lil Larry. You call me anything else besides Lil Larry, I bust you in the damn lip. Hashtag lifted trucks, <laughs> hashtag trucks. I ain't gonna tell, like, bro, I'm from the South. I'm from Fort Worth, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, all right? And of course, I've grown up doing country stuff. I got country friends, you know what I'm saying? That's super country white boys, like, and that's what I grew up in, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's funny, man. I'll tell you, all like a good friend of mine that I grew up with, you know, the whole family just drove trucks, you know what I'm saying? His name was Trevor R. Wine, good friend I played basketball with growing up. And I don't know where his dad was from. I'm sure he was from Texas, but man, his dad was super country, bro. He would just be, my name's Fabian, right? And he would call me Faby Baby. Hey, oh, what's up, Faby Baby? Oh, how you doing, bro? You up, right, man? Dude was just the coolest down to earth dude you would ever meet, man. And the family was warm, loving, embracing. Like, we would always do the country stuff over at his house. You know what I'm saying, man? It just brings back really good memories. And it's just, it resonates with me growing up in the South. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially in a more diverse area to where I was around, you know, white people, I was around blacks, I was around Hispanics, you know what I'm saying? So, but this is just funny to me because he reminds me of my friend Trevor. Oh man, we gonna go shoot something. Oh, oh. Hashtag Ford, hashtag Chevy, hashtag GMT, hashtag Yoda, hashtag Toyota, hashtag Big Toyota. It just don't sound like an old ass fucking poodle your grandma got. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag Yoda in the mud, hashtag four wheel drive, hashtag rebel flag, hashtag confederate flag, hashtag country boy, hashtag country girl, hashtag country boy and girl. Everybody around town was telling me they seen 50 shades of grey. I thought they were talking about my cousin's uh, C71 we spray painted last week. My favorite colors is dirt, camouflage, and rebel flags. Hashtag country people. Hashtag country folk. Hashtag John Deere. Hashtag green. Hashtag John Deere green. We fucking understand. Why are you wasting your life fucking hashtagging stuff? Hashtag chair. Hashtag oxygen. Hashtag hashtag. Popping up their collars and shit. Oh, look, it's the gay Dracula. Please don't suck my dick. Looking like you want to fight looking like this. I mean, bro, like, we go like, if you want to go. Where we going, motherfucker? Your mama's house? Tell her I got a fucking dick stronger than a 12 valve Cummins. Everyone has that one friend who over-exaggerates the shit he buys off Craigslist. Hey, Chad, did you see my Facebook post? No, what is it? I got me a goddamn drag truck. For fucking real, fucking yes. What's it fucking look like? Shit, my fuck, it's fast. It needs an exhaust manifold. It needs a hub assembly. It needs the back seats. It's got some mice, you know, running around in that motherfucker. But hey, fuck Stuart Little and his family. I kill all of them. I mean, I gotta drain the gas tank because the gas so old and it like, it done got all jelly vine and shit. I mean, but first I gotta buy a gas tank for it though. Okay. I ain't gonna lie, I didn't know he was doing skits like that. I swear I had made a video pertaining to how he came in as a content creator. And everybody in the comments was like, no, he's not really a content creator. He's an artist. And it's like, bro, he was doing Vine clips. What is y'all talking about? I don't know, man. I, I, I didn't know about this part of him, really. I thought it was either Adam Calhoun. That I think I actually, I think it was Calhoun I said that about. My apologies, y'all. But I didn't know Upchurch started doing funny videos, like... I lied, it, it don't have a gas tank in it. It needs a rear axle, the brake line's dry right there, but they, that ain't even nothing, though. It needs a transmission, it needs a, a brand new motor, because what's got in it is uh, locked up and shit. It needs all, <laughs> all new windows, though. But, bruh, it's a bad motherfucker. <laughs> I remember the first one he made, yeah, the first one I saw him make where he was outside pretending to work on a car and that was at my mom's and dad's house. And I pull up and he, <laughs> just, he has a wig on. <laughs> uh, and he has one of my mom's blouses on and he's outside just pretending like he can't fix his truck or something. And I'm like, oh my God. And yeah, that's how that started. It was really bizarre, but I'll, you know, apparently people liked it. But he was on World Star before that by accident. He didn't even know he was on it until he was out in public one day and somebody said, oh, dude, that's the guy that was on Wall Street. And it was, he didn't tell me because, believe it, involved a strip club. That's probably why he didn't tell me. I'm pretty sure it involved. 
when you make world star and you don't know it you doing something right bro <laughs> like I got a friend who's on World Star, but he paid to be up on World Star. You know, he wanted exposure. But when you make World Star, it's typically like in a sense that they just find your content and like, oh, this is worthy to be on. Nobody goes, I ain't gonna cap. Maybe the younger generation goes to World Star still this day. But I was doing that in like 2010. I don't go on World Star anymore, bro. But anyways, like, if you got on World Star around that time, you was gonna blow if people liked whatever content was posted there. Something he said to a stripper or something. For Ryan, he started the Vine thing. Well, at that time when he had the Vine stuff, I, you know, I always have something different. It's always some bullshit piece of shit. But I always be doing burnouts or whatever. Well, Ryan started filming his Vine videos as a comedian. You know, being funny, always just kind of laughing and cutting up and being goofy. Well, then you know we started throwing in riding dirt bikes, fours, and some Vine videos. And then we had some of my pieces of shit. And hell, he already know he can gas me up to a burnout or something, you know what I mean? Even if it's my daily, that's all I had, I'd do a burnout in it. Hell, you gonna film it? Fuck it. Yeah, we're gonna do a burnout in this. Hey, who takes minivans there, through the woods? You gonna do that there right there? That all the way got 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 there? That all Minivan doing work. <laughs> Dude. They died. Bro, what is they doing, bro? Oh, you smoking. Oh, shit. Fuck it. Haul ass. Hey, put it, re put it reverse. Hey, no, put it reverse. <laughs> Oh shit, don't stop! Woo! Oh fuck! Some bitch about ran me over! And that's how you do it! Just gonna sling a fucking rod. Dang. Down now. You cannot, dude, don't even think about stopping. <laughs> oh, we're gonna sink it. He's supposed to go mudding in a minivan. Hey, don't doubt that minivan game. I ain't gonna lie. The mini, the minivan is a serious vehicle. You know what I'm saying? Especially when it's like an up and coming first type car. You know, it's your first car. Mama Duke's got the soccer van, you know, soccer mom van. And it's like, hey, you're trying to go out. It's like, hey, you don't got a car. You probably got your permit, but she lets you take the minivan. Woo! <laughs> that minivan, boy. Talk about busting a move. I ain't talking. And he's on the cell phone. Talk. God oh. damn, hey. <laughs> Executive. <laughs> hit it, hit it, fuck it. Oh. <laughs> it fucking made it though. <laughs> Concrete shit. Oh, fuck. What now? Oh, oh Joey. The hazard's coming by the zoo. So we're over here. We just got this fucking stuff in the creek in this guy's backyard. Damn. Hell yeah! Yeah, he was doing the Vine thing. Sure. And then he started doing kind of got get a little dabbling in the music and stuff around the Vine time. Started happening. But then I remember when he was in the Vine stuff, there was a couple people that would stick out during the Vine days, you know what I mean? That would become famous for their Vine stuff. Well, you know, I, I didn't really care how. I was like, you know, that's computer stuff. I'm not into that, you know what I mean? But Ryan, he, I could see he, he was getting more and more into that and watching their videos and kind of seeing you know what they're doing and just different things like that but uh yeah the vine days was, was fun and then one time we called this dude the vine days bro vine was like here and gone in seconds like a lot of people jake pauls and the logan pauls these dudes just make it a killing a lot of people made a killing off vine transition to youtube you know what i'm saying but nah you can see that tenacity in his eyes because 
a lot of innovators, a lot of visionaries, they see things as a stepping stone, bro. You could tell in his eyes, he was like, all right, I, I got this kind of buzz going. Like, how can I transition? How can I alley-oop this into something else? Literally, when he was sitting in front of the screen, you could just see it in his eyes that he was he was on it. He was like, all right, you know, I can use this as a platform, a stepping stone in order to kind of take my career to this level. Like, life is a lot of stepping stones. It's a perception. It's a perspective. If you look at it as a brick wall, you ain't never going to get past it, man. If you look at whatever you're dealing with as a stepping stone and know that it's momentary, it could lead to whatever you've been looking for, to be completely honest, man. Just keep that faith, keep that attitude right. And told him his two-wheel drive truck was on the cover of 4x4 magazine. And this dude was so gullible that he believed us. We prank called him. Man, and you know, we, we knew we were going to see this dude probably that afternoon or the afternoon after that. And uh, man, we, we, we done that and never told him. forgot all about it. Well, a month had went by, and this dude had done told everybody in Ashton City that his two-wheel drive Ford Ranger was going to be on the cover of a 4x4 magazine. Finally, he, he told us again about it. And me and Ryan looked at each other. We bust out laughing. We was like, bro, we were joking, man. Like, that was us that called you. You know what I'm saying? And he's like, no, no, no. No, wow. for real. It's, it's going to be on the cover. We're like, bro, that was us that called you. What, about a month ago? He's like, yeah. Like, dude, it was us. You know that? We would prank call people all the time and kind of be like that, too. So uh, there was a lot of those videos. And then Ryan would just, we'd, we'd say somebody, he'd, he'd make up a rap. He made one about Willie Marsh and just stuff like that. It was kind of funny. And then uh, that's that's when he started He started being able to change, you know, I remember him starting to be able to change words and lyrics and stuff like that. I mean, him be riding around in a truck and we a song would come on and we would kind of keep up the same beat but then change the lyric to it. You know what I mean? Just riding around bullshitting and never, I mean, at the time we never thought anything of it. So now, I think the whole time we was in the construction thing, that's when Vine first started because I think that's when MySpace was kind of, uh, was dead at that point. I remember when it started getting popular. Uh, that's when Bobby with Redneck Nation comes in because he sees him just making silly videos and messing around and he can see something in Ryan. He saw something there and so he reached out to him and offered him a sponsorship. He was so excited. That was the first wow. thing he ever that ever really you know came into play and we're like oh dude this really might go somewhere. When I met Ryan, first of all, I proposed the idea for him to do this for a living, to do social media, and he just was like, uh, it was like trying to herd cats, you know. <laughs> he he just had no clue that that was even a possibility. And I said, listen, man, you know, you've got this thing going, and I think you have that it factor as far as you connect with people, you're genuine, they feel that. And he wanted to do the music. This was the vehicle at first that was the moat that got the most views and got him no the vehicle key word it was the vehicle at first but that was always in his mind you know every time that we talked and all that that was immediately to the forefront it's like i want to get to talk to people and know them but the music was was paramount always when i first met ryan i just wanted him to be able to do this for a living and provide for his family and if that meant him just being a person on YouTube or, or, or this, or being a social influencer, then so be it. But, you know, he really wanted to do this music thing, and I wanted to make sure that I gave him every opportunity, support-wise, to be able to do that because it was so important to him. And, you know, our company has always supported the independent artist. We've always supported the underdog. And what I saw in Ryan was a bunch of people dismissing him, maybe uh, teachers or this or that, with uh, his, you know, the way that Ryan is. But what they don't understand is that's why he is. Facts. Facts, man. <laughs> you can't say it any better than that, man. Like, I, I, I kind of finally came to a realization the other day that, you know, I tend to beat myself up a lot for how I think, how I tend to be. And, you know, I'll be asking God for forgiveness. Like, why, you know, like, why do I act this way in certain moments in time? Why do I, you know, am I sporadic? Why do I have a, a short fuse, you know, um, trying to be a better person, trying to better myself? And then, like, 
I came across a video, I believe it was like Stephen Furtick, if y'all know who Furtick is out of South Carolina, or is it North Carolina? I believe he's in, uh, he's from South Carolina, but he lives in North Carolina now. Um, don't quote me on that. But he had mentioned, basically just like, everybody's created uniquely for a purpose. Nothing is not purposeful. It's strategic. God is strategic. He created you for a specific purpose. So learn to embrace your insecurities. Learn to embrace what frustrates you about yourself because it was very intricate in how you were made. You know, whatever pulls at your heart, whatever tugs at your heart, whatever, you know, you feel a yearning for inside is what has been put on your heart for a reason, for you to make a difference, for you to uplift, help, show love to people and just do for others, man. Be selfless. So, you know, it just, it really resonates in the, in, in, just trying to understand, better understand who you are and accepting yourself, knowing that you're meant for a great thing, man. You're great. You're meant for a purpose. There's meaning to it all. But with that, that's the Holler Boy part one, man. Uh, I told you I was going to break these up in a 20 minute segment. So uh, check me out in part two, man. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Fort Worth Fabian, man. It's the road to a million. Peace, love, prosperity, man. We'll catch you guys in part two.